I've started the opening to this video about five different times already because I didn't have a good way to present what I'm going to tell you here. But I feel like I need to give all the details because if you're suffering with sinus pressure like I've been, you're probably in a miserable state. The goal of this video is to tell you what's been happening to me over the last couple of years. Ever since I can remember, I've had sinus issues. But the real goal of this video is to show you all the things that I've tried to alleviate that pressure and how I've come to this final decision of I need some surgery to fix my deviated septum and potentially another procedure. So like I said, ever since I can remember, I've had issues with my sinus. And right before pandemic, I finally went to see an ENT. He sent me for a CT scan and said, you've got a deviated septum. I kind of knew that already. And he suggested that surgery might help. He also suggested that I go see a neurologist. I couldn't put two and two together on why he said that unless it was all in my head that I was getting sinus issues. Okay, fast forward, a uh, pandemic happened. I forgot about fixing my sinus because there were bigger problems in the world. And last year around October, I started getting this severe sinus pressure that I had never experienced before and it was stuck right here. I could not get rid of it no matter what medication I tried, it stayed there. And I'll go through some of the things that helped that. But long story short, I went back to that ENT and he had given me a prescription for budesonide, fluticasone, and azelastine. And I had actually found those items on my own and procured them before I went to see him. So he was just prescribing me the stuff that I have able to get my hands on. Anyway, those gave me some relief, uh, but the pressure was pretty intense and it wasn't immediate relief. And so some of the things that are in my list helped with that. He again recommended that I stay on those meds for about a year. And if it doesn't help, come back and we will do the deviated septum surgery. Now, my problem is that the symptoms would come and go pretty quickly. Like I could get relief, I could get everything clear, I'd be breathing completely normal, and then all of a sudden it would come back. Or I would eat a meal and it would come back. Or I would eat a meal and it would go away. Now here's what's funny. I'm a very regular person. I eat the same stuff every day. For the last couple of years, I've been on a carnivore diet. So I eat eggs every day, I eat steak every day and I have no issues or I have tons of issues. So what I decided was let's do an elimination diet and I had fasted for a week. I feel like the issues stayed exactly the same. So it wasn't the food. Fast forward to this year, October of this year, I'm having the same issues around October, getting this pressure in my head that I can't get rid of. So I go to a different doctor. Uh, this ENT specialized in balloon sinoplasty. And I thought this may be an alternative to the deviated septum surgery. It's still a procedure, but it's less invasive. What they do is go up your nostril and inflate balloons into your sinuses, which will open them up. I think this is a good alternative. This doctor also though wants me to have a CT scan because he needs a fresh look at what's happening inside my head. So I go to take the CT scan and he also recommended that I see an allergist. I'll talk about that in a second also. I got the CT scan, uh, then I saw the allergist who gave me the allergy test where they, they prick your skin with these pins. It's like instant mosquito bites where you get very itchy. And the allergist comes back and says, you're allergic to dust. I'm like, oh. <laughs> And I didn't have the heart to tell her, like there's dust everywhere, so what am I gonna do about that? Uh, I didn't pay her too much mind. She then proceeds to write me three different scripts for medications, which I'll get into later. They didn't seem to work. Um, and she wanted me to come back for a more invasive allergy test where they put these mosquito bites like into your bloodstream somehow. And the whole thing just sounded very frightening. So I didn't go back and see her. I'll talk a bit about the medication she gave me uh, later on, but those did not work either. Uh, so I go back to the balloon sinoplasty doctor and what he tells me is that I do have deviated septum and I should likely get that fixed first and then come back and do the balloon sinoplasty. He said, 
for lasting effects, this is the best course of action. Now, what I liked about this doctor is that he didn't have any skin in the game to have me do the deviated septum surgery, whereas the first doctor, I thought he was just seeing dollar signs and was like, sure, get the surgery. I don't want to have surgery. <laughs> I don't think anybody wants deviated septum surgery or any surgery for that matter. But this sinoplasty doctor explained that it's going to help with my long-term breathing. Um, and I'm, I've got a long life ahead of me. A life expectancy is getting greater and greater every year. I'm healthy in every other way, but I do have this breathing problem. So at the end of all of my research, I have decided to go through the balloon sinoplasty. But let's back up and talk about all of the random things that I have used over the course of my suffering, because I think some of them will help you. Uh, and quick note, today is January 15th, and I will be getting deviated septum surgery on the 25th, so 10 days from now. I'll probably make some updated video about that. So let's get into the list. I'm going to start with a brief list of stuff that didn't work. I've tried so many different things that didn't work. The list is too long to go through every one of them, but I'm going to highlight a couple of the things that I tried that you'll probably look at as well as you do your own research, like on Reddit or YouTube or Amazon, like how do I fix my sinus pressure? Okay, the first thing you're probably going to find is this machine. It's an irrigation machine that you put salt packets into and it automatically shoots water into one side of your nose and out the other side. If you've got mild dirt in your nose, maybe this works. It did nothing for me. Complete waste of money. I think this is about $100. The second item that I found on Amazon that I had high hopes for was this sonic stimulator blaster type machine, which I, I don't know. In theory, I guess it works. It sends a sonic wave into your sinus to help shake things around. Um, if you're familiar with the gains wave technology, which a lot of men are using for erectile dysfunction, same sort of mechanism, only in a little tiny device. Uh, psychosomatically, maybe it worked. Uh, I don't know. I tried it hundreds of times and I can't say that it did anything. Again, roughly $100 on Amazon. Try it at your own risk. I'm a member of a biohacking group and they had a bunch of good suggestions. Uh, one or two that I actually held on to, but this one I thought was interesting. They told me that the microbiome in my throat was potentially off. So I bought these lozenges that help with the good bacteria in my throat. Waste of money. Uh, and the list goes on and on. Uh, all kinds of weird stuff. This one is called serapetase. I'm not even sure what the mechanism is for this anymore. I bought it so long ago, but again, it didn't work. So that's just a couple of the things that didn't work. Now, let's get into a list of the things that did work. And just so you know, I'm averse to any sort of prescription medication. The first thing that I found a while back, which helped me through sinus infections, a common cold, general irrigation, is a technique that I found for irrigation with xylitol, salt, and iodine, and I'm gonna show you how that works. It's a bit unorthodox, and it's gonna take a little bravery and a little getting used to, but I use this one still, and it's very powerful. Uh, it's an Ayurvedic cleanse. Unlike a neti pot or uh, a rinse, which I'm gonna talk about also, this gets the fluids all the way into your sinuses and then out your mouth. And I'm gonna show you how that works now. The first thing that you're going to need is distilled water. I use an Alexa Pure, which is a gravity filter because water is very important. I can make a whole video about that, but clean water, hopefully you've got that on hand. Boiling it is preferable. Let it cool down to a temperature that's not going to be shocking as you're ingesting it into your body. The next thing you're going to need is a giant salad bowl. 
uh, this is the one that I use. It's a glass Pyrex. Make sure that this is clean. I'll typically wipe it down with some rubbing alcohol just to make sure that there's nothing funky in there. And then the next item is xylitol. And this is really the magic ingredient in this mixture. Xylitol is used as an artificial sweetener. It comes from birch bark. I would be pretty choosy about where you get your xylitol from. Uh, you want it from American birch. Uh, if it says organic or non-GMO, that's probably a good move as well. Uh, xylitol is used in toothpaste and other products. Uh, there's a nasal spray later on I'm going to talk about where I use xylitol as well. But essentially the mechanism with xylitol, to explain it simply, is that it doesn't allow microbes and bacteria to adhere to it. So using this as a flush and leaving it in your sinus and system will prevent anything from sticking around and it kills that stuff off. The next item we're gonna use is Lugol's iodine. And I'll show you the proportions. You just need a couple of drops of this, two or three. What the iodine is used for is an eye wash. So once you get your water in the bowl, the xylitol and a little bit of sea salt. I use Celtic sea salt because you wanna make an isotonic solution as you're inhaling this stuff up your nose. If you don't put some sea salt, it's gonna burn like hell. So a small pinch of sea salt. I'll show you the proportions that I use for this giant bowl of water. It's not scientific, it's more like baking. You just need some salt so it doesn't burn. But back to the iodine. So the couple of drops of iodine it, the main reason is because you want to put your entire face in first and open your eyes and then blink your eyes a bunch of times. There's a lot of bacteria that lives in your eyes and killing that off with the iodine is going to help your sinuses and your upper respiratory in general. In fact, I just listened to a podcast yesterday with Dr. Andrew Huberman who said that the main vector point for viruses and bacteria and anything else to get into our bodies is through our eyes. So if you wake up with that crust in your eye in the morning, that is your immune system killing off the bacteria that was trying to get into your body overnight. Okay, so those are the items that we need. Clean water, salad bowl, xylitol, good salt, and iodine. I'm gonna show you how it all comes together and how you actually get it into yourself. So this bowl is two and a half quarts it's almost filled to the top. And these are rough measurements. I've done this so many times. It doesn't need to be exact, but these are the rough me measurements that I'm using. So with a big tablespoon, I've been doing two heaping scoops of xylitol. And then roughly half a tablespoon of the sea salt. Uh, if you put too much salt, it's gonna be too salty and it may burn a little bit. So that's about the amount of salt that I'll put, maybe even a little bit less. Like that, that's good. Okay. And then with the Lugol's iodine, I give it two big squirts. And we just mix all this together. You want to dissolve everything into the bowl. You're going to need a bunch of paper towels and you want to tip your head over like a bird. And first thing you're going to do is blink your eyes in the water. And that'll clean out any gunk that's in your eyeballs. And then next, you're gonna inhale the water through your nose and spit it out your mouth. This is gonna take some practice, but you wanna lean over just like a little birdie. Just like so. And you're probably gonna to wanna to blow your nose after each time.
Okay, that wash, as I mentioned, has been my go-to. And it's probably one of the more consistent things that I will use. Now, if you're not familiar with a neti pot or a rinse squeeze bottle, and you've got sinus issues, I would be shocked because these are typically the go-tos. You can use that solution to fill your neti pot or to fill your squeeze bottle and it'll have similar effects. Although using the bowl is the most advantageous because like I said, it's the only one that will get all the way into your sinuses and through the entire passage. What you're also gonna notice is that you may have some of that solution dripping out throughout the day because it's really in there. So it doesn't all come out at once. If you bend over to tie your shoes, you may just get a full like drip of the solution coming out. So yes, you can use it for your neti and your rinse bottle. The other thing that you can do is make a nasal spray with it. There's a product on the market called, I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's X-L-E-A-R. And I've had this bottle for a very long time because I keep reusing it. I don't know where to get these nasal misters and these are great to reuse. So it essentially has the same ingredients, xylitol, clean water, salt, and they put an extra ingredient in here, which is grapefruit seed extract. And it occurred to me, I can make this myself. These are like 13 bucks a pop, but I have all the stuff here. Uh, the one I didn't have was grapefruit seed extract, which I got at my health food store. I'm sure you can get it on Amazon. This bottle I bought, I'm gonna say five years ago, it's still mainly full. The other thing that I like to add to this spray is Povidone iodine. This is the one that I use. It's straight off of Amazon, nothing special. And just one or two drops of this. I use about seven drops of the grapefruit seed extract. You can put all kinds of things in here. Uh, I experiment with a little colloidal silver and this spray bottle I keep with me pretty much at all times. It's in my backpack. It's excellent for on the go. If you feel like you're around people that are sick, it's excellent for airplane travel, which is how I originally heard about this. Uh, there was a time when people were very concerned about germs floating around the airplane. So squirting this up the nose is, is great. Not as good as the squirt, as the uh, squeeze bottle, the neti pot, or the bowl, but on the go, this is definitely excellent. So other things that are in my list of items that will work are black seed oil. And black seed oil comes in two different versions. One is this giant bottle, which I will drink. If I feel any sort of cough or cold coming on, two tablespoons in the morning, two tablespoons at night, this is amazing stuff. And it's been shown to have advantages for all sorts of conditions. There's tons of videos out there about black seed oil. Do your own research on that. More importantly though, for the sinus, there's another version which is in this smaller dropper bottle. And the difference here is that the concentration of thymoquinone is at 7%. So to use this specifically for sinuses, and this is a big hammer, it's gonna burn a little bit, but it definitely does a good job of clearing you out. Take a couple of drops and put it on a Q-tip and then swirl the Q-tip around in your nose. Works excellent. It does sting a little bit, Sometimes when I use this, I'll do a flush afterwards with one of the rinse bottles or the neti pot because it is a bit intense. Like I said, it's a big hammer. Okay, speaking of hammers, the final big hammer in this tool bag for stuff that works is Arm & Hammer. This is the one that I use. There's a couple of different versions. I think this is the strongest. It's got some isopropyl alcohol in here as well as baking soda and like I said, if I could not get that mucus to move, this is the only thing that would really shake it around. And then I would be able to lay down and massage this area. Now, what worked for me may not work for you, depending on where the pressure is. I found that, and I just found out by accident doing this, I was leaning on my side one evening and I could physically feel the mucus draining out of my head. 
and I tried repeating that. It worked at first and then it stopped. But after using this or the rinses or whatever, this in particular though, since it shakes everything up so much, if I lay on my side and then put some really intense pressure right here onto my sinus, I can literally move all the way along my eyebrow and push that mucus so that it clears the sinus. And it's like somebody just put liquid Drano in my head. You can hear it bubbling and gurgling uh, as the air pockets move around. And that's what would get it to actually clear. So when the pressure got unbearable, this is what I went for. It's the only thing that actually moved that mucus to the point where I could physically like work it all the way through. And it didn't work every single time, but I would say about 95% of the time, I would have to use one or maybe two cans of this. It's expensive. And this was my life. Finally, the last thing I'm gonna mention, if you've got severe sinus pressure, one thing that did give me a little bit of relief was CBD and Tylenol. The CBD didn't work every time, but it helped with a headache. Not all CBDs are created equal. I would suggest you do your own research on that. I've tried several. I'm not gonna mention any brands because what works for me may not work for you. But read the labels, look at the reviews, and that might help with a headache. Uh, other stuff that you find online, like steam or a hot compress, steam never worked for me. The hot compress, I guess, kind of worked a little bit for a headache, but no, not really. So hopefully that will help you with the stuff that really works. The Arm & Hammer is the biggest one in the toolbox, and then all those flushes. There's one final item that I want to put on my list of things that actually work. And I'm not going to go into great detail about this one because it's a bit of a touchy subject, but it's called MMS. And I'm not going to use the scientific name for it because it's that controversial. This one you need to do your own research on. There's plenty of info out there. If you have trouble finding it, you can always send me a message on X and I'll point you in the right direction. But MMS has definitely been one of the bigger tools in my toolbox that I've been using lately, and there's all sorts of applications for it. I recommend a book by Jim Humble, and the title is uh, The Health Recovery Guide. So find that book, look up MMS, and I think that's going to help you immensely in your health journey, not only for your sinuses, but for other issues. Final section of things that worked, and then a couple that didn't work. Obviously, if you've got sinus issues, you're aware of Afrin. This typically does a good job of opening up the nasal passages. It does not attack the sinus pressure that's up here though, and it doesn't move that. It is helpful though in conjunction. I'm gonna warn, you can only use this for two to three days, otherwise you get a condition called rebound, where you start producing more and more mucus. So Afrin is not a long-term solution, but it's still in my tool bag because sometimes you just need it and things get uh, so stuffy that, that this will help in conjunction with the other stuff. Early on, my research led me to two items which were azelastine and fluticasone. Uh, originally, these were prescription, but it just so happens I found them over the counter and I was actually waiting online at Duane Reed to refill this prescription and right next to me was the flu fluticasone. I can never say these properly. In any event, it comes in a little spray bottle. You can get this on Amazon. This one's made by Kirkland. 25 bucks for like six of these. Whereas the prescription, $35 copay for one. And I was beholden to only one per month, which was crazy. Same goes for the azelastine. That's also over the counter. Whereas I had been given a prescription, you know, these doctors, it's like such a racket between them and the prescriptions and the referrals and on and on and on. But Astapro, same thing, as elastine, you can get this on Amazon. So uh, just a quick description. The fluticasone is a corticosteroid or glucosteroid, I can't remember. Uh, in any event, it's a steroid that when you spray it up there, it helps reduce the inflammation and overall pressure. So I've been using this consistently. I feel good today. I used it uh, in the morning and I use it at night. This one, the azelastine, 
helps reduce the amount of mucus that you're producing. I don't want to say I use this every day, uh, but almost every day. And if I feel a flare up, definitely. This one tastes horrible. I will say that. If it rolls in the back of your throat, you're going to taste it for a while. But these two work pretty great. And that's what I've been using consistently as I'm waiting for my surgery to come. Uh, the last item, well, not the last item. So one other item is budesonide. And this again is a steroid. Uh, budesonide is used for all sorts of conditions. They're in asthma inhalers. They're in nasal sprays. This one is a liquid, so you can put it in a nebulizer or the way that I'm using it. This one is prescription. You cannot get it. The way that I'm using it is by prescription in the rinse bottle. I would put one of these with water and a packet of salt. It sometimes helps. It sometimes doesn't help, uh, but I do have these on hand as, as part of my toolkit. Finally, my original ENT gave me a prescription, which I was super wary to take. I don't like any prescriptions. This one is prednisone, another steroid. Prednisone is an overall treatment for inflammation. In this case, the inflammation was in my head. Did it work? Uh, I think so. You know, when the pressure and pain was just unbearable, one of these with a Tylenol and some Afrin and all the other stuff that I was using generally made me feel a little better, but it didn't get rid of the inflammation altogether. This is a prescription that's hard to get. I couldn't get it refilled. They only gave me 30 and I got this over two years ago. So I've got some for emergency just in case I ever need that again. I'm going to wrap up with the allergy stuff. The, the allergist gave me Allegra and another prescription called Rialtris and one other which I can't remember. And the reason I can't remember is because I'm kind of done taking more pills and prescriptions. I don't want any more. I want to alleviate this condition, which is what led me to deciding to get the deviated septum surgery. So those are all the things that worked for me. Hopefully you found some information here that's been helpful. Report back to me on things that you're finding useful because I think there's just not enough info out there for sinus health. I've been searching over the years. Nobody has given me, here's the path that you need to take. And I think the path is going to be different for everybody. So where it stands now, I'm doing washes. I'm using these two items and I'm going to be getting deviated septum surgery in 10 days. And depending on how that goes, I may go on to do the balloon sinoplastic because on the side, this new ENT doctor has told me once the deviated septum is fixed, I may not need the balloon sinoplasty, but we'll see how I feel. I want to breathe good. I've got to live a long time. So hopefully my air passages will clear up my thinking and improve quality of life because honestly, this is all I've been thinking about every day. I've got PTSD about, am I going to be able to breathe? Is there going to be a, an attack on my sinuses? Am I going to be miserable around everybody just rubbing my head constantly? You name it. So again, hopefully this info was helpful. Thank you for making it all the way through. I know this was a long video, but there's a lot of info that I wanted to relate to you. So if you liked it, uh, let me know, share it with somebody else and make a comment with what's, what's working for you.